Is it safe to use a carbon steel skillet on an induction cooktop? Can you ruin a good carbon steel skillet on a flat top stove? Should you change the way you preheat your carbon steel skillets based on whether you're cooking on gas, induction, or electric? I don't know. Let's find out. Now, I love these carbon steel skillets. I've done a lot of videos and reviews on them. They get better every time I cook with them. They're my favorite pans. But some people write to me and say that they're having problems with them, either with the seasoning or something is happening after they receive their pans and start cooking in them where they become warped. They will no longer sit flat on a stovetop. They wobble. They'll rotate. I want to find out what's going on and what's causing problems for those people. Now, on YouTube, I put up a poll. And I asked people, are you having any problems with your carbon steel skillets? And thankfully, the majority of people said they're not having any problems at all. However, some people are having a few problems. So I put up a secondary poll and asked, if you're having problems with your carbon steel skillet, what type stovetop are you using? It turns out that most of the people that report having problems are either using an electric flat top or an induction stove. So to drill down on this a little bit more and help those people out, what we're going to do today is heat some carbon steel skillets on various stovetops. I'm going to take an infrared temperature thermometer gun, get a little bit of data, see how the pans preheat, and see if we can figure out just what the heck is going on. Now of the eight or nine carbon steel skillets that I own, I have not had any problems with any of them. They are all still flat as a pancake. They've all seasoned very well. No problems whatsoever. At the same time, I always use a gas stovetop. So maybe I'm doing something differently than the people with the induction and the electric stovetops. So we're going to look at that. Now today we're going to do the testing on the Ilve Majestic Range gas stovetop. We've also got a glass flat top stove in our basement. And I've also purchased this. This is a Burton Digital Max induction burner. 1800 watts, it says it can get a pan up to 450 degrees. Now if we use canola oil, which should smoke at about 400, 425 degrees, that should be plenty hot to get a pan up to the smoking point. Do a little bit of maintenance seasoning on one of these carbon steel skillets. We'll see how that goes. And also I've got a brand new Mavial M Steel 11 inch carbon steel frying pan. We're going to try and do an initial seasoning on that pan today on an induction burner and see how that goes. See if we get any warping there. Let's get started. Okay, to start with, I took a brand new Mobile pan and performed an initial seasoning with salt, oil, and the skins of a few potatoes. So I turned the induction burner on and set it to 200, hoping to heat the pan slowly. It went way, way past, very quickly. The middle of the pan got very hot, but the edges were cooler and the sides were significantly different. At some points, I recorded temperature differentials of over 250 degrees between the center of the pan and the sides. I ended up with a spot of weird seasoning in the middle of the pan right above the coil, but nothing on the edges and the sides. I moved to the electric flat top and got similar results. Although it brought the pan up to temp more slowly than the induction, it still got hot only right above the burner. I moved the pan to a bigger burner and this helped, but I still got no seasoning on the sides of the pan and the temperature differential was still hundreds of degrees. I went back to the induction to cook some potatoes. As I preheated the oil, a hot spot developed and the oil moved away and started smoking. I thought the pan was warping right in front of my eyes and I was afraid I was about to ruin this new pan. So I decided to switch over to my Matfer pan and do some maintenance seasoning on each of the three cooktops. Now the Matfer is a fairly similarly sized pan, but it's over a pound heavier. They're definitely a little thicker and heavier than the Moviel. I used a half a cup of canola oil and brought it up to its smoking point on each of the three cooktops. And here we go. The results were striking. Interestingly, it was almost the inverse of the other cooktops. The sides and edges got hotter faster than the middle of the pan. And after heating the pan for a while, on the gas stove top, the heat was much more uniform. On the induction and electric, the differential was hundreds of degrees. And since the seasoning produced by the flat tops looked really weird on the Moviel, I moved it over to the gas stove top and did a quick stove top seasoning. Look how fast and nicely the sides seasoned up. 
And now here's where everything falls apart. I put the mat fur on the electric stove top and not only did the differentials still exist, the pan actually warped a little bit as I heated it so that I could spin it. At this point I panicked and turned the eye off and let the pan cool slowly down on the stove top and thankfully it returned to its normal flat shape. I moved the pan to the induction cooktop and watched this. The pan warped and deformed right before my eyes and the friggin pan spun on its own. I didn't even touch it. And this time, unfortunately, it didn't go back to flat when it cooled. So now my beloved Matford pan is a friggin spinner. Now the problem isn't just with carbon steel skillets. I tried cooking tests with a heavy lodge cast iron pan and also a fancy copper core all clad stainless steel skillet. The copper core is supposed to spread the heat out very effectively, but unfortunately I got similar results and differentials with these pans as well, although they didn't warp. So my theory is that it's not the amount of heat itself that's causing the problems, that it's the way the pan is brought up to temperature. And what I mean by that is when you put one of these pans on a gas burner, turn on the burner, that flame and heat will hit the bottom but it spreads out all the way around the pan and then rises up even around the sides. So the pan, even though it's not 100% uniform, it's gonna heat much more uniformly than if you put the pan on a burner and you have to wait for conduction to take that heat all the way through the metal of the pan and reach the edge on its own. And that conduction just never seemed to happen. Even after cooking foods for more than 10 minutes, I was still getting differentials of over 200 degrees. Furthermore, whereas a gas flame is constant, I noticed that the thermostats on the flat tops were kicking on and off. So not only were there differentials, there were wave after wave of differentials in which the thermostat would kick on and I'd get a temperature spike and then it would cool back down. So if we add all this together, this has to be what is screwing up these pans. The marketing benefit of induction is that it can heat very rapidly, which is fantastic for boiling water. But going from zero to thermonuclear in an instant is very bad for carbon steel. What can we do to help people with induction and electric stoves be able to use carbon steel pans? Here are some recommendations. One, pick a burner as close to the size of your pan's bottom as possible. Two, heat your pan as slowly as possible. And whatever you do, don't use the rapid boil setting to season carbon steel. Three, after you cook, let the pan cool down on the stove as much as possible. And if you deglaze the pan or rinse it to clean it, make sure you use hot water. Four, if you're looking to buy a carbon steel skillet, get one with a stainless steel or a non-coated handle. This will allow you to season your pan in the oven, which will allow you to season the whole surface of the pan, including the sides, and not get that weird spot of seasoning right in the middle. Five, also, if you're shopping for a new pan, get the thickest and heaviest one you can find. A good example is this DeBayer Mineral B Pro model. It has an oven-safe stainless steel handle. It's three millimeters thick, which is about the heaviest you can find for a carbon steel skillet. Um, it's very, very heavy. For comparison, the Mapper pan we've used today is a little over four pounds. A 12 inch cast iron lodge skillet weighs in at just a little over seven. This one is over six. So this is very, very heavy for a carbon steel skillet. And the DeBuyer catalog lists it as undeformable. So if you have a flat top stove and want to try carbon steel, this DeBuyer Pro is a safer bet than most in my opinion. Now, as much as it pains me to say it, there may just be some irreconcilable differences between carbon steel pans and flat top cooking. I think the manufacturers of the stove tops and the skillets could do a better job calling this out and warning people of the problems. But short of getting a gas stove, you might just be better off using a heavier cast iron pan or stainless steel skillet. Okay, here are some other carbon steel videos you might wanna check out. If you enjoyed this one, please subscribe to the channel. So the original questions were, is it safe to use carbon steel skillets on electric and induction cooktops? We've shown that the answer is a definite no, at least not completely. And in some cases you can ruin a carbon steel skillet on a flat top stove. And with carbon steel pans, do you need to change how you preheat and cook on those stove tops as well? Absolutely, yes you do. Thank you for watching Uncle Scott's Kitchen and we'll see you next time.